We've talked a fair bit about elastic deformation. Let's dive into plastic deformation a little bit more. Once you start bending something and it's not going back, what are the sort of things that are happening along the way up until the point where it fractures? Well, sometimes we see that the elastic to plastic transition is really abrupt instead of gradual, right? We've shown you plots like this where the deformation is sort of linear and then it becomes not linear. You could draw the point back to 0.2% and you say that right there is my yield strength, right? But in some cases it doesn't look smooth like that. Instead, it reaches some upper point, it drops pretty dramatically, and then you have this lower yield point. So you end up with a upper and a lower yield point. It does something odd where a lot of strain is developed there and then it starts to do this typical up curve that you see, right? So what are some typical values that you can expect to see for metals? Well, uh, aluminum has yield strength of around 35 megapascals, pretty easy and flexible to bend, whereas steel is much stronger, over you know around 1400 megapascals, the typical value for yield strength of steel, right? There's something known as the tensile strength, sometimes we call it the ultimate tensile strength, and this is the maximum stress that is achieved during stress versus strain, right? So there's some maximum point it reaches, and then you'll notice that the stress actually starts going down. It's still, it's like, it's, it's deforming still, but the stress to make it deform is going down, down, down. So this is your maximum or your ultimate tensile strength. That's the maximum that it can ever withhold. And after that, it goes down. And then you, of course, have your stress at fracture. So you could have a stress at fracture as well. Okay? Now, quick question. This plot looks a little bit funny, doesn't it? Right? It makes sense that if you apply more and more stress, you get more and more strain. And so this general upward curve makes sense. But why would it ever start turning down? Right? So true or false? The material is getting harder and stronger up until the tensile strength, TS. And then it becomes weaker, right, since it's going downhill. True or false? So it's a bit of a trick question. As you deform materials, they always get harder and stronger. So why would it look like it's going down? You get right here it's labeled, you get necking occurring. Necking in your material is when you get localized plastic deformation. So instead of the whole thing deforming sort of uniformly, you get local deformation. So let's say this is your dog bone, right? That's before you bend it. But you can get localized deformation where maybe it looks like this. right? This region right there basically gets further drawn down. That's called necking, okay? We'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Because of that, what you really need to do in a plot like this to plot it accurately to get true stress is you need to calculate true stress and true strain. Here's how you do it. True stress is defined by the force divided by your instantaneous area. Your instantaneous, or the at any given moment, you take that area, not the area that you started with, because those are different. Because if it draws down, like this cross-sectional area right there is way smaller than what you started out with, right? And then your, your true strain would be the natural log of your instantaneous length divided by your initial length, all right? And where does that come from? We've done the derivation here, but I'm going to skip it for this class. You can take a look at it if you want. Right? So an easy way to calculate this, your true stress, sigma t, is equal to the stress that you think you applied, because that divided by your initial area, multiplied by 1 plus epsilon. Okay? And your true strain is going to be equal to the natural log of 1 plus your strain. Okay? Now these expressions are only valid up until necking occurs. Right? Once necking occurs, all bets are off. Um, so how would a true stress and strain plot look different than an engineering stress and strain plot? Again, engineering is when you divide it by your initial area, and true is when you divide it by the instantaneous area. So again, if we plot stress versus strain, we know what engineering stress and strain looks like. It goes up, it comes down, and then it breaks, right? So true stress and strain would keep on going up until it broke, right? It would keep on going up because you're taking into account instantaneous area, right, to get your 
true stress as opposed to your engineering stress, sometimes sigma e, okay? So what are some examples of this necking? Here you can see it. These markers were equally marked. I think they were every one centimeter on this bar. And then when they pulled it, you can see that between this marker and that marker, it's now like double the length because right there you got additional deformation that was localized deformation occurring in your material. And then the break obviously occurred there because look at your cross-sectional area. It's much smaller there than over here. So it has a higher stress state there.